So ka'allam yagnaw fiha. It was as if they never lived there before. As if there was no life, no activity, no business, no commerce over there before. Ala bu'dal li madian. Unquestionably, away with madian. Meaning, may they be cursed. Kama ba'idat samud. Just as samud was distanced away. Just as samud was removed away from the mercy of Allah. The people of Samud are mentioned over here. Why? Because the people of Samud, they were in a way their neighbors. They lived around the same area. Their place where they used to live was near to the place where the people of Madian used to live. Similarly, the punishment that struck the people of Madian was similar to the punishment that struck the people of Samud. The adab was the same. They were similar in their disbelief. And also in some of the crimes that they committed. Highway robbery. And they were also both Arabs. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala بُعْدًا لِمَدِيَنَا كَمَا بَعِدَتْ سَمُودِ Distanced, away, removed away are the people of Madian just as the people of Samud were removed away. You know this expression, Ala بُعْدًا لِمَدِيَنَا كَمَا بَعِدَتْ سَمُودِ As if they were thrown away, just like the people of Samud were thrown away. What does it show? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so ghani. He is so rich. He is so free of need. He does not need people. He does not need them. He destroyed one nation, he destroyed another one. He does not fear the consequences at all. If we believe, if we obey, it's for our own benefit. If we worship Allah, if we accept the teachings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, it's for our own benefit. We're not benefiting Allah because He does not care. أَلَا بُعْدًا لِمَدْيَنَا كَمَا بَعِدَتْ سَمُود Just as the people of Samud were removed away from the mercy of Allah. If we look at it, the people of Madian, they were not willing to change their ways. They were not willing to change their ways. Whether it was their religious traditions or it was their financial practices, they weren't willing to change them. And no matter what the messenger said, they weren't willing to accept. But did their system continue? Did their lifestyle continue? It did not. Anything that a person does in this world, it does not continue. Sooner or later, it's going to come to an end. And it's unfortunate that a person would strive to preserve it at the expense of displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the expense of upsetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like for example, a person wants to Get a house through haram. Get an education through haram. Do something. Get money through haram. Okay. Do it. Jahadu bi ayati rabbihim. Denying the ayat of Allah. Rejecting them. But how long will you live in that house? How long will that house last? How long will that money last? How long will that education last? For how long? A few years? A couple of years? But sooner or later it's going to come to an end. It was as if they never lived over there. But this is the test. This is how we are tested. That do we give importance to something that's going to benefit us for a few years only? Or something that's going to benefit us eternally in the hereafter? What is it that we give preference to? وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا And certainly we sent Musa as a messenger with our signs. What does it mean by signs? The various miracles that Musa a.s. was given. And over here in particular, ayat refers to the tangible signs, the tangible miracles that were physical, that could be seen by the people. Like for example, the asa turning into the snake. Or similarly, the glowing hand. Or the punishments, the various punishments that were sent upon the people of Fir'aun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Musa alayhi salam with his ayat, وَسُلْطَانِ mubin And also a clear authority. What does it mean by sultani mubin? As you know the word sultan has various meanings, evidence, argument, authority. Over here it has been understood as authority. What kind of authority is this? That the power that Musa alayhi salam had in conveying the message. The style in which he conveyed the message with so much confidence. We learned earlier that when Musa a.s. showed the miracles, Fir'aun called it magic. Musa a.s. was not willing to accept it. He says, you call this magic? It's not magic. 
It's as if he was scolding Fir'aun. How dare you call this magic? So this was Sultan. Who has the courage to go and speak before a king and a king such as Fir'aun and say that what you're saying is wrong? How dare you call me a magician? Musa a.s. was given sultan i Mubin, a clear authority. Secondly, sultan i Mubin has also been understood as the Asa in particular. His staff. Why? Because a staff, it's a symbol of strength. It's a symbol of support. So Musa a.s. was given many ayat, and amongst them in particular, the Asa, which is called sultan i Mubin. Because this Asa, it defeated the magicians. It parted the sea. It performed various miracles. And Musa a.s. was sent to who? إِلَى فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَئِهِ To Fir'aun and his mala. What does it mean by mala? The elite. The elite of the society. The Coptic people. فَاتَّبَعُوا So they followed, meaning the people. Instead of following the messenger, who did they follow? أَمْرَ Fir'aun, The command of Fir'aun. What was the command of Fir'aun? He had said that أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى I am your Lord. So they followed him. They obeyed him. They continued to worship him. Amr of Fir'aun, the affair of Fir'aun, the system, the matter of Fir'aun, of not accepting Musa a.s. and challenging him, the people followed him in that. Instead of using their own mind, what did they do? They followed Fir'aun. They followed him, they followed his path in the way of transgression against the messenger. وَمَا أَمْرُ فِرْعَوْنَ And the Amr of Fir'aun, the command of Fir'aun, was not at all bil Rashid. It was not at all rightly guided. Rashid, again, we're doing this word from the root letters, Rashin Dal. And what is it? That which is of right conduct. That which is rational. That which is rightly guided. So his command was not correct at all. It did not lead them to khayr. So we see that the people of Fir'aun, instead of following Musa a.s., they followed Fir'aun. Why? Because Fir'aun had dunya. He had a great title, a great position, authority, wealth, fame, glory. And on the other hand, Musa a.s., he was from the Bani Israel, a slave nation. He was from a slave nation. He didn't have that money. He didn't have that authority. He didn't have all that glamour and beauty and zina that Fir'aun and his people had. So just imagine, Fir'aun on one side and Musa a.s. on one side. What do you think the people were impressed by? The content, meaning what the messenger was saying or what Fir'aun was saying or what was obvious, meaning the appearance of Musa a.s. or the appearance of Fir'aun. They followed Fir'aun because of his appearance. They didn't look at what Musa a.s. was saying and what Fir'aun was saying. What Fir'aun was saying was completely irrational, illogical. How? Like for example, when he brought the magicians in competition with Musa a.s., he was defeated. He was a loser over there. But still, because he had so much money, because he had so much power, instead of believing in Musa a.s., instead of following him, who did people follow? Fir'aun. Fir'aun said, I am God. Can any human claim that he is God? If he says that, what are you going to think? What are you going to think about him? That something's wrong with his mind. He's claiming to be God. Then how come he can die? How come his father died? How come his mother died? How come he becomes sick? How come he feels sad? How can he be God? What Fir'aun said was completely irrational. But still people followed him because of his appearance, because of his wealth, because of his money. And what Musa a.s. said was very rational. That don't oppress the Bani Israel. Let them go. The one who created you, worship him. Be slaves to him. Don't be slaves to one another. Don't be slave to this dunya. But still the people followed Fir'aun. Because people get impressed by that which is obvious. By the apparent only. They don't look beyond the appearance. We learn about Fir'aun that فَعَصَى فِرْعَوْنُ الرَّسُولَ فَأَخَذْنَاهُ أَخْذًا وَبِيلًا But Fir'aun, he disobeyed the messenger. So we seized him with a severe punishment. This was the Amr of Fir'aun, disobeying the messenger. And the people followed him in that. يَقْدُمُ قَوْمَهُ He will precede his people. 
Yaqdumu from the root letters Qaf, Dal, Meem And Qadama Yaqdumu is to go ahead of someone To lead someone By walking in front of them By being in front of them So Yaqdumu Qawmahu He will precede his people Meaning he will lead his people Who are his people? Those who follow him When? Yawm al On the day of judgment The people who follow Fir'aun, who do the same that Fir'aun did, whether it was at his time or after him. Fir'aun is going to lead all such people on the Day of Judgment. What does it mean by that? Anyone who follows the footsteps of Fir'aun in being arrogant, in refusing to submit, in refusing to worship Allah, in oppressing people, in whatever day, in whatever age it is, no matter what era it is, such a person is going to be led by who? Fir'aun. Even if there is no relationship between the two. Even if that person is not Coptic, is not Egyptian, but he follows the way of Fir'aun, he will be led by Fir'aun. Because Al-Mar'u Ma'aman Ahabba. A person is with those whom he loves. Which is why we learned that a person who refuses to pray salah, who will he be with in the hereafter? People like Fir'aun and Haman. Because refusing to pray is extreme arrogance. Extreme arrogance. This is following the footsteps of Fir'aun. So the way he led the people in dunya, the way the people followed him in disobedience, in arrogance, the way he led his people into the middle of the sea, drowning all of them. Similarly, he will lead his people on the day of judgment. And where is he going to take them? To the hellfire. فَأَوْرَدَهُمْ So he will lead them. النَّارِ Into the fire. أَوْرَدَ From the root letters, وَأَوْرَدَلْ Wurud is to come to water. It is basically to arrive at a watering place. So he is going to lead them to the fire. Why is this word used over here? أَوْرَدَهُمُ النَّارِ That he is going to lead them to the watering place of the hellfire. If you look at it, the day of judgment is so intense. It is so long. It is so difficult. That people will say, get us out of here. Take us to our destination. And for them to get out of the day of judgment... Is like going to a watering place. And Fir'aun is going to take them out from that place to where? To the hellfire. To get some sakina, to get some peace, to get some comfort. But they're not going to find any comfort over there. فَأَوْرَدَهُمُ النَّارُ وَبِئْسَ الْوِرْدُ الْمَوْرُودِ And also just imagine a flock of sheep that is being driven by the shepherd to the watering place, to the water hole. Just imagine. How the sheep are following the shepherd. How they're coming. One after the other. In obedience. This is how all the people who follow Fir'aun in behavior are going to follow Fir'aun on the day of judgment to hellfire. وَبِئْسَ الْوِرْدُ الْمَوْرُودِ And how wretched is the place to which they are led. How wretched, how evil is the place to which they are led. Al-wird is the place of arrival. Wird is basically from the same root as awrada, wawradal, and it's a watering place. A place where animals come in order to get water, in order to drink. Wird is also used for a thirsty person or a caravan that has gone out in search of water. So wird is the place where they arrive. So how evil is this watering place al the one that they are led to. The one that they are brought to. The one that they will be brought to in order to quench their thirst. Mawrood is maf'ool. So with the place, al that they are brought to. How wretched, how evil is that place? And this place, hellfire, is described as a watering place by way of sarcasm. By way of sarcasm. In the dunya they followed him to literally the watering place, to the middle of the sea. And in the hereafter they will follow him 
into the hellfire. So how evil is this place that they will arrive at? Wa utbi'u and they were made to follow. Fi hadihi in this meaning in this world, they were made to follow. La'na curse. In this dunya, they ended up with curse. Who? The people who followed Fir'aun. Wa yawm al qiyamah and also on the day of judgment, they will be given what? They will be pursued by what? Curse of Allah. So the curse of Allah is upon them in this dunya and also in the akhirah. بِئْسَ الرِّفْدُ الْمَرْفُودِ And wretched is the gift which is given. How evil is the gift that is given to them. We see over here that a person, whoever he follows in this dunya, whoever he follows in this dunya, he will be led by him on the day of judgment. If a person follows the messenger, if a person follows someone who is righteous, then he will be led by him on the day of judgment. And how embarrassing if a person is not led by the Prophet ﷺ on the Day of Judgment. Instead, he is led by people like Fir'aun. People who are disbelievers. People who are known for their crimes, for their evil, for their disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But unfortunately, we blindly follow them. We blindly love them without looking at who they really are. We will put their posters up. We will follow them everywhere. We will see what they're saying, what they're wearing, what they're doing. Do we want to be led by them on the Day of Judgment? al marfud. What an evil gift it is that is given. What is this evil gift that is mentioned over here? A rift? This is referring to curse. La'na. Wa utbi'u fi hadihi la'natan wa yawm al qiyamah. Larna is sent upon them in this dunya and also on the day of judgment and what an evil gift it is that is given to them. And again, the word gift is being used in the way of sarcasm. The word rift is from the root letters ra fa dal. Ra fa dal. And rift is used for a present, a gift that is given to someone who is poor, who is needy, who needs that gift. There are different types of gifts, right? This particular is given to someone who is needy. Similarly, the word is used for appointing a stipend for someone. What is a stipend? If someone's on welfare, every month they get a particular amount from the government. So, rift is also to appoint a stipend for someone. Who is it appointed for? For someone who is needy. For someone who needs that money. And it's given to them regularly. It's not just given to them once and that's it. No, it's given to them every other week or every month or every few months sometimes every single week similarly from the same root is the word rafada and rafada was the fund that the people of Quraysh used to collect in order to serve the hujjaj to serve the pilgrims they had this fund known as rafada rafada rafa alif dal tamabuta from the same root rafada so basically rift is a gift that is given to someone who is needy. So what is the gift that is given to them on that day? Curse of this dunya and curse of the hereafter. Ibn Abbas anhu said that a rift refers to a la'na ba'd al la'na. Curse after curse. What an evil gift it is that is given to them. al mafud the one that is gifted. So we see that the lesson in these ayat for us is that we have to be careful about who we are following. Who is it that we're following? If you look at it, in all of these stories that we have learned thus far, in this surah in particular, there is a messenger who is calling the people. And on the other side, who is calling them? It's either their idols, or their norms, their practices, their culture. Jabbar in Anid, Fir'aun. So we have to choose our leader. Who is it that we're following today? Who is it that we're obeying today? Because whoever we obey today, whoever's footsteps we go on today, we're going to follow them tomorrow as well. We're going to follow them tomorrow as well. So we have to be careful. ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْقُرَى This is from the news of the cities. الْقُرَى plural of قَرْيَ Meaning, المذكور, what is mentioned thus far, the incidents that have been mentioned thus far, the people of Nuh, Ibrahim, Hud, Salih, Shu'ayb, Musa, that 
This is of the news of those towns that نَقُصُّهُ We related alayka upon you minha from it. Meaning we're only telling you some information about the incidents that happened in the past with these people, with these nations, with these towns. We're not telling you about every single detail. We're telling you about what? Some of the details. Minha. Meaning amba. Amba is a plural of naba. So ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْقُرَى نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ And مِنْهَا قَائِمٌ From it are قَائِم وَحَصِيد And also harvested. Meaning from the قُرَى Whom you have learned about. There are some that are قَائِم And some that are حَصِيد. What does it mean by that? قَائِم is one that is standing. One that is still alive. In the sense that their buildings, their structures, their ruins are still standing today. And we see that. For example, Fir'aun has been mentioned at the end. The buildings that he constructed, they're still standing today. Similarly, the people of Samud, who lived in houses that they had carved inside mountains, they're existing today. So minha qa'imun. It doesn't mean that they're alive today. What it means is that the structures that they built... Their remnants are still standing today. But their people have gone. Their people have finished. And this is the reality with every single person. That whatever you have today, you are going to go and it's going to stay behind. Either it's going to stay behind, qa'im, or it's going to be hasid. Hasid is from the root letters, haswadda. And hasid is a field that has been mown, that has been reaped, that has been harvested. That has been harvested. And remember I mentioned to you earlier that one is hasad and the other is hasid. Hasad with an alif is to harvest at the right time. When the fruit is ripe, when the crop is ready. And when you do that, you gain profit. But hasid is that which is mown, that which is harvested before time. And when a field is harvested before time, then what's the result? Total loss. Of the effort of what you've built, of what you've done, of what you were looking after, completely gone. It's finished because it's not going to bring you any benefit either. So hasid means that their remnants even are finished. You don't see their remnants even. So minha qa'im, of those towns, there are some whose remnants are still standing today. And there are others whose remnants have completely gone today. They are hasid, completely finished. They are completely obliterated from the surface of the earth. So we see, for example, the nation of Hud, they were completely destroyed. Whereas the nation of Samud, some of their remnants are present today. The people of Fir'aun, his remnants are present today. وَمَا ظَلَمْنَاهُمْ And we did not wrong them. Meaning we were not unjust towards them. When? When we destroyed them. Because a person may wonder, these people... They were destroyed by Allah. Was this injustice on the part of Allah? No. وَمَا ظَلَمْنَاهُمْ We did not do any injustice towards them by destroying them, by punishing them. وَلَكِنْ بَتْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ They wronged themselves. How? By bringing this punishment about on themselves. Because all of their messengers, they warned them. Nuh a.s. warned the people. And finally we learned about Shu'ib a.s. Even he warned the people. That if you don't change your ways, I fear for you, the punishment is going to descend. Lut alayhi salam said, أَلَيْسَ مِنْكُمْ رَجِلٌ رشيد. So the messengers, they warned the people, they told them about what they were not supposed to do. But still, the people did not listen. وَلَكِنْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ They brought about this consequence. فَمَا أَغْنَتْ عَنْهُمْ So it did not benefit them. What did not benefit them? آلِهَتُهُمْ Their gods. Aliha, the plural of ilah. Which gods? Allati yad'oona min dun Allah, those whom they used to invoke besides Allah. Min shayin, anything at all. The gods whom they used to worship besides Allah, whom they were not willing to give up at any cost, they did not help them when the punishment of Allah came. Lamma jaa amru rabbik, when the command of your Lord came. When the punishment came upon the people of Nuh a.s., did their idol save them? No. They weren't willing to give them up. But did they save them? They did not. 
Likewise with every other nation When the punishment came Did their idols help them at all? No They did not help them In fact their idols even were destroyed Similarly It's possible that a person is preferring This dunya The wealth Or anything of this world Over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is giving it preference over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala But think about it When death approaches a person Can these things defend a person? Can they save a person? No, they cannot. The very house that a person builds on haram, and he's not willing to give that up for the sake of Allah, sometimes a person dies in that same house. That same house. The very car that a person has bought on haram, a person meets an accident in that same car. That very same car. فَمَا أَغْنَتْ عَنْهُمْ آلِهَتُهُمْ أَلَّتِي يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِن شَيْءٍ لَمَّا جَاءَ أَمْرُ رَبِّكَ وَمَا زَادُوهُمْ And they did not increase them غَيْرَ تَتْبِيبٍ Except in complete destruction Meaning their false gods They only increase them in destruction تَتْبِيب is from the root letters تَبَبَ تَبْ تَبَّتْ يَدَى أَبِي لَهَبٍ وَتَبْ تَبَاب تَبْ means to be destroyed To be perished And تَتْبِيب is to reach destruction to reach ultimate destruction due to constant loss. So basically, tatbib is to be headed to destruction, is to be on your way to loss and destruction and devastation. That one step after the other, gradually, a person is led to destruction. So these gods, they only led them to complete annihilation, to complete destruction. They did not give them prosperity, they only led them to their end. And if you look at it, if a person is spending his life serving this world, then what happens? Each day, the same dunya that a person is striving to acquire, it is leading him to his end. A person is losing his time, a person is becoming physically unable, physically exhausted. It's only leading him to his end. Why waste your life? Why waste your energy? Why waste your time in something that is leading you to destruction? Whereas at the same time, the same energy a person uses in the way of Allah, what did we learn? وَيَزِدْكُمْ قُوَّةً إِلَىٰ قُوَّتِكُمْ He will increase you in your kuwa. And eventually you have to go anyway. Then why don't you go for the sake of Allah? So what's the lesson? What's the moral of all of these stories? That nothing can be given preference above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No family, no wealth, no business, no affiliations, no desire, no lust, nothing at all can be given preference over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if a person gives preference to anything else above Allah, then what's going to happen? It's not going to protect him. It's not going to save him. And it's only going to increase a person in his destruction. It's going to deteriorate a person. It's not going to increase him. It's going to exhaust a person, not nourish him. It's going to drain him not grow him. The only thing that gives benefit to a person is belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his obedience. Because eventually it leads to rizqan hasanan in this dunya and also in the akhirah. So we should live our lives consciously, choose wisely about who we want to follow, what we want to do and make the right choices. Let's listen to the recitation of these ayat. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته